Here's question two on the handout I put out. And I did change the wording from the one that the te teaching uh, assistants handed out. Um, I'm putting in this case uh, blue bodied hets. I think that's going to give us an opportunity to deal with a dominant mutation. You'll see how it falls together in a second. So I'll give you a minute to read this and I encourage you to hit the pause button while you figure out your next strategy before I tell you what it is. Okay, so you should have noticed that we have um, a little bit of a different situation with the way that the genotypes are going to roll out because one of the mutations is dominant. So uh, what we usually want to do at the beginning is start out with having the gene symbols illustrated and notice in this case I'm going to go with the plus and no plus system the capital B indicates a dominant mutation and the wild type is recessive but it's going to have a capital letter the plus sign tells us that the wild type is recessive to the mutation once we have this we proceed the same way we would with any of these kinds of questions um, we're going to make a hypothesis about what gene is in the middle and let's just throw B in the middle let's do it in the order that I've got here so we have uh, all the genes in coupling. Um, in this case, I'm going to call the mutations in coupling. Uh, you may disagree that well, you say, well, that's dominant and that's recessive, so it isn't really coupling. But that's the way I'm going to use it, just, just for this example. So we have all of the mutations in coupling and all of the wild types in coupling as well. And if we run a line through, we know that we'll get vestigial gray purple. Um, the gray isn't listed in the table of phenotypes. That's just sort of the color that the fly normally is. Anywhere there's a blank, you can assume it has the wild type version of that trait. So looking here, uh, we want to see if our smallest phenotypic class has the double crossover, and it does not. Well, that tells us that this isn't the order. Blue is not in the middle because we don't have vestigial gray purple and as either of our smallest double crossover classes. So when we compare the two, we can say pretty much definitively that's not what we're looking for. Now let's try it with a different group in here. We've got all of our genes again in coupling, the mutations in coupling, and the uh, wild type alleles are uh, in coupling here. We've put purple in the middle and I've got a very faint pink arrow over this showing us that we can take vestigial and uh, it's not in the phenotypic classes, uh, P plus is red and the blue color. Do we have something that's vestigial blue? Well, you take a look, here it is, and that tells us that the purple allele, or the purple gene, I should say, is in the middle of the other two. So we're going to start with this premise and work forward. Okay, here's just a reconstruction of the F1 uh, genotype. We've got the alleles arranged in, in the proper order for that F1. Now let's see how it fits on with the table. If we just look at the recombinant from the hat, and we're going to ignore the other chromosome, which will be all recessive in the test cross, uh, we have um, these different genotypes. It's a shorthand that I've used. Looking at the largest numbers, that tells us the wild type, and that's consistent with what we see for no crossovers here. If we then look at region 1, which is between V and P, we can assign the crossovers that occur there. So if we look here, we have the genes in coupling, the alleles for the two different genes are coupled together and if they're in repulsion there and there and also here and here we're going to put a little one beside it to tell us it's a crossover in region one now let's take a look at region two between p and b well uh, we've got our wild type alleles again together and the mutant alleles here that that looks like a capital p but it's a lowercase one um, looking again here we can see lowercase capital and again lowercase capital of pluses if they're in repulsion which is not there not there but it is here and it is here we're going to put in these symbols as well notice the double recombinants of course have a crossover in one and region two so the formula is here you've seen it before we add up all of the progeny and we plug in the numbers so you can see where the numbers came from for the ones in ye yellow here they're crossover in region one put them all in this like that you add them up and you're going to get 7.31 centimorgans or map units let's look at region 2 we're going to put in all the crossover in region 2 up here so 29 39 1 and 4 you see them there we do the math we get 2.12 centimorgans 
And the double recombinant, we're going to count these as two crossover events each, because they are double, re, uh, double crossovers. Add up all the numbers, 129, 118, 29, 39, that's what we have here. And finally, two times one plus four. Add those up, you should get this number, and the distance is 9.43. So when we draw our map, we can put them proportionally spaced just like this. We should check the numbers we've got. If we add up these numbers in our map, 7.3 plus 2.1, we're going to get 9.4, and that's in good agreement with what we have right here. So we can put that in as our completed map.